I'm Jack Lasky. I'm the co-founder and CEO at Asset Layer. And Asset Layer is a SaaS solution for creating and managing digital assets. And we're focused on creator economies for games. So why creator economies for games? It's actually a super simple answer because they kick ass. Um, but seriously, Starfield, this game came out three weeks ago. You can build your own planet and your friends can come hang out with you on your own planet. It's pretty cool. And it's not just that it's fun, it's a proven model. The company that proved it best is Roblox. Uh, they actually get criticized because they are exploiting child labor. I look at it differently and I say, hey, if you're a company and you can enable kids to create games that make money, you've done something pretty cool. Uh, I'm a musician, I'm a writer. I understand how great of a feeling it is to work really hard at something, share it with the world, and potentially make some money from doing so. And so this is, this is an amazing experience that Roblox is giving these kids. Uh, but it's not just kids, it's not just amateurs. Um, Roblox, there's entire game studios that have, you know, they're spending tens of millions of dollars every year just creating games for Roblox. And the reason for that is that a creator economy is an amazing distribution network for content. And I'll talk more about that later in the presentation. The challenge is really just that it's almost more of a perception challenge than anything, but there's a sense, and I've talked with a lot of game studios, that these sorts of features are not attainable. They're too expensive, they're too complicated. You know, a lot of these studios are not really back-end people. They're more about what actually goes on the screen. Uh, and, and there really just hasn't been the right product uh, that makes this kind of function in a game go totally mainstream. Because I don't think it should just be Roblox that's benefiting from a creator economy like this. I think that there are so many games that could be a launch point for all kinds of creators and that this is really going to transform gaming over the next decade. So you know, what am I actually talking about? I guess I probably put too many words on this slide. Look over there. Uh, the features that enable creator economies, what are they? The thing that I guess I'm most excited about and that I think makes us most unique is application interoperability. And this is a really big concept, but I think the, big, the best way to think about it for games is just giving gamers an integrated experience across devices, across platforms, and across games, regardless of who built that game. This can be your character that moves from game to game. It can be your digital currency that's going from game to game. The idea is just that it's an integrated experience. So that's something that we offer. I'll talk more about how we offer it in a second. We also do user-generated content. So this is actually your players or even professional artists who are creating new assets, new content for your game. And then finally, peer-to-peer -peer markets. And I'll talk more later in the presentation about why I consider that part of the creator economy. You know, the nuts and bolts of what we do, you know, we're a SaaS product, so it's what you would think, API, SDKs. We integrate with Unity, which is the most used game development platform in the world. Uh, but really, the strategy that we've taken as a company is that we build games. We build games that push the envelope on what's possible from a creator economy standpoint. And everything we do in those creator economies, we make sure that we power it with a generalized product that we can then share with other companies. Uh, and we've, we've discovered a few things that you absolutely have to do and you have to get right in order to make your game open to a creator economy. And what does it mean to be open? It's really about being shareable. How can you make your game shareable? And it kind of boils down to a few things. It's your user management, it's how you do your login, it's how you do your authentication, it's how you manage user inventories. It's your digital asset management. Um, how are you organizing your assets? How do you create your assets? How do you make them accessible? It's permissioning. How do you coordinate all these different parties together in a permission fashion so that you actually have organization and not chaos? And then finally, how do you actually deliver content into games at the right time for the right player? We're going to jump into a demo. Um, this is a game that we're launching sometime next month. It's called Worldtopia. 
It is a creator-driven, hyper-casual gaming universe for web and mobile. That's total gaming jargon. Uh, basically, it's creator-driven. It's oriented around a creator economy. It's a hyper-casual gaming universe. So it's a whole collection of games that are all hyper-casual. And hyper-casual really just means like a super simple game that you would play on your phone, like if you were on the train, you know, waiting to get to your stop. Uh, web and mobile, this will be released on web and also iOS, Android, and I'll demo the web version here. Uh, what you're going to see is the gameplay, and then we're going to jump into our Unity integration, which is actually brand new, soon to be launched. And I'm going to create a new asset for the game. We'll jump back in. You'll see the, the new asset in the game. It'll be really exciting. Well, that didn't work. QIT. So these games that we're launching with, these are clones of games that have 100 million plus downloads. So we're taking a concept that really works. You can see this is our new authentication. Uh, it's really fast. We're, we're pretty proud of how simple we've made it. And so I'm watching into the game here. This is a game that was built in Unity. Um, and you basically play as a ball. And the way these games are set up is you know, you play these levels, you earn coins, you buy new balls, and that's kind of how you progress through the game. And like I, like I mentioned, you know, these types of games have hundreds of millions of downloads. They're extremely popular. So this is just like a placeholder ball, but you can see I, oh, I think this is the old video. Oh, well. So excuse the laggy screen. But hey, we're in the game. We're playing with our ball. We're collecting coins. So what we're actually doing in this context is that ball was not in the game when you actually booted up the web. That came from our content delivery network based on your inventory and your selection. These coins that you're, collection, these coins that you're collecting, we power those. So we power the virtual currencies that are in these games, the virtual assets. Um, and the business model behind a game like this is basically ads. We do ads on a voluntary basis. So you can opt in to watch an ad and double up your points. And then selling virtual currency so that people can buy more balls. So it's pretty simple. So this is the actual asset layer dashboard. So this is where I can get an overview of my game. I can, through the dashboard, actually create new items for my games uh, and get an overview of like what different players are doing, what does my universe of assets look like. I can issue new units. Uh, I can list units in a store or a marketplace. So now we're going to jump over to the Unity integration. And so what you're going to see is this is a, just a little 3D ball. And now we're in the Unity editor, and we're going to upload this to Asset Layer directly for Unity, and it's going to be immediately accessible in the game. And this was all done you know, roughly in real time. Obviously, we made some cuts for time's sake, but it's, it's this easy of a process. Basically, I just bring the asset into my scene. Uh, I'm going to compare it to this Apple, which is already in the game, and make sure that it's positioned correctly and it's sized correctly. And then I'm going to export it. And the export is going to be for web, for iOS, for Android, for PC, and for Mac, so that it's cross-platform and it works regardless of where your editor is open from uh, and where you're actually using the application. So our ball looks good. And now we're going to mint it. So you'll notice that we have two slots in this game, characters and scenes. We can actually turn an entire scene from a Unity game into an ownable, tradable asset and something that can actually be shared between applications. So it's not just necessarily your character 
or your virtual currency, it can be an entire gaming experience that can be managed through asset layer and distributed to different games at different times. All right, so now we'll see it's going to show up in asset layer um, right away. And this means that it's already in our game. We actually, that image is something that we generated directly from the object. Obviously, we need to fine tune that one a little bit, but I don't know, still pretty fun. And we can see it's already in our inventory uh, immediately. And now the asset is going to immediately work inside the game. And that's our magic moment. Uh, Hopefully you're excited about this as I am, and I'm gonna explain in a second kind of, you know, what does this actually mean? IT, we can probably just skip the rest of the video. Awesome. Uh, so I wanna to talk to you guys about the asset layer advantage. So I mentioned that these titles are, they're clones of games that have 100 million plus downloads. So why is Worldtopia an improvement on that? And of course, you know, spoiler alert, it's all about the creator economy. And I want you guys to really kind of imagine these two games side by side. You know, the sort of standard hyper casual title that I play on my phone by myself I earn coins that don't really mean anything. I buy assets that I can only use in one game. Compare it to what I'm about to describe, which is a world where these assets are actually available to any Unity developer. And when, when you learn Unity, the first tutorial they give you is to build a game that you play with a ball. So any Unity developer can build a game from Worldtopia. And the question is, of course, why would they? Well, we can look at Roblox as a model. They do because it's a highly targeted distribution channel for them. They know that there are Worldtopia players. They know that they own these balls. They know that they're looking to play these types of games. And so if you are, let's say, you know, an independent developer based in Pakistan, you know, are you gonna create your own IP, commission or create all of your own assets, build your own user base, or you're comparing that to the opportunity of, well, I could just build something for the Worldtopia community. Um, and it's not just new games, it's also, of course, new assets, new balls, new scenes, new stages. And so there's an opportunity for artists to create new content that they can sell through marketplaces or they can distribute through the game. And so you can imagine instead of just the 20 balls that get released in a typical hyper casual title, I have 20 new balls every day that I can collect. Uh, and then finally, the peer-to-peer -peer marketplace. And this is, I mentioned I was gonna talk about why I consider this part of the creator economy. And it really comes down to the fact that when you put a peer-to-peer -peer marketplace on top of a game like this, you turn it from something that's single player into something that's multiplayer. Because now instead of just playing a game in isolation by myself, I'm actually collecting scarce assets. And I have the opportunity to engage with other players through exchange. And so it adds a whole new dimension to the game where gamers become creators for one another in terms of the overall story of Rotopia. And with all this, you get distributed content production, you get a distributed marketing incentive because you have all of these parties, the game developers, the artists, the players themselves who are all incentivized to help you grow the game. It opens up new revenue streams. And ultimately, I think that this creator-driven model, it's a sustainable viral growth model for games. I don't think every game will be creator-driven, but I think that there's an enormous opportunity for creator-driven titles that are just inherently more interesting, more dynamic, more valuable, 
to outcompete legacy options. We make money from fees. Uh, we also do co-development. So we partner with game studios. We do the integration for them, and we take a cut of top line revenue. And we have a fantastic team, uh, including some amazing investors and advisors who have helped us get to this point. So thank you to all of them. Thanks to all of you for being here and for your attention. Thank you all so much.